Hi guys, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. Today I want to start with my featured make of the day. Um, this is the Arches cardigan that is currently in testing from Haley Herman, um, also known as Haley Handcrafted. If you've been a follower of this podcast for a while, you've heard me talk about her. I love her patterns. Um, I have mixed feelings every time she comes out with a new tester call because it's like, and I know that I'm going to need to do that. Um, do I have time? And, um, I absolutely made time for this. So this is called the Arches Cardigan. It's still in testing right now. Um, the sample that she showed used, I believe it was Kobu, which is a cotton bamboo blend. And it was very soft and had a lot of drape to it and a lot of movement. Um, but I chose to use Respect, um, which I think I showed in a previous video on here, which is a recycled polyester um, cotton blend um, with a little bit of nylon. And I really love it. I wanted something that was a little bit different um, than what I usually pick. This is obviously a lot more neutral than I usually go. And um, I absolutely love it. So when I was shopping for this yarn, I um, was originally thinking it would all be one color and I was kind of looking for something this kind of oatmeal tan color um, but they didn't have enough yarn of just this and then I saw it with the blue I'm like oh that could be really pretty and so I just went until I ran out of blue and then I decided that I wanted the sleeves and the like the top little section to all be this kind of tan color and I am very happy with it. I made the sleeves about three quarter inch or three quarter inch, three quarter length sleeves. I like having a little bit of extra room, especially on a cardigan like this. Um, so if I'm wearing something long sleeve, it'll still peek out, but also it's just more transitional for me so that I can wear it into spring and summer without it being too hot or heavy, as well as the fact that my hands are always doing something. So um, it kind of keeps them out of whatever I'm working on. Um, so I really like this cardigan. I'm a big fan. It's again that recipe style that she does so well. Um, so you get it where it fits exactly your measurements. You could change the length. Someone else in our group, and I'll, I'll scoot up a little bit so you can see the length. Mine hits like right about the top of my hips. So you can see, boop, all blue. Um, someone else in our group made hers almost like a cropped and then she did really short sleeves and it was adorable. Um, other people's have made theirs like almost knee length. Um, I think someone in our tester group used a yarn that has a little bit of a sparkle because she wanted like a date night look and she made hers knee length. I think it had long sleeves and like a raspberry color. It was great. So if you aren't already following Haley Herman, Haley Handcrafted, you should on Instagram. She's great. Um, but you will see a lot of testers pictures coming out for this relatively soon. So this is one of the things that I finished on our last trip. I actually finished it on the plane, which was a good thing in the fact that it was done, but then it's like, oh, I have this whole finished garment that is now just taking up room in my suitcase. Should have thought through, through that a little bit better. Um, the next, we'll go ahead and do finished objects. Um, the next finished object I have, I also did while on this uh, particular trip, and it is just a little Tunisian ear warmer. Um, I will not throw it on because I think it will get caught on these earrings. But what I did was I looked up a stitch that I hadn't tried before from uh, Teal Yarn Crafts, and um, that was a Tunisian stitch, and I practiced it and I was like, oh, that's really pretty. So then I just made mine as long, like as wide as I wanted for an ear warmer. I think I used 25 stitches um, for this particular stitch pattern, use an odd number. And then this is from Sorella Yarn. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a fan of me, you've probably heard of her before too. Um, she's great. This was from her Netflix collection and the colorway is called Shop Around the Corner. So it's uh, inspired by the Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, You've Got Mail um, <laughs> movie, which I love. And um, so, yeah, I knew when I bought it that I wanted to make an ear warmer out of it. I still have a decent chunk of the skein left, so I haven't decided what I want to do with it, um, but that was fun. And it was a nice, quick, easy project. Um, 
because with the last trip that we took to California, I had this project, which like I said, I, I knocked out on the plane. And then I had another project that I hadn't started that was a little bit more tedious. In fact, I can show you that next. Um, so I wanted something that would be a quick and easy project. That's exactly what this is. I think I did this on the car when we were going from San Francisco to San Jose, but I love it. And I really like the way that this lattice stitch kind of showcases all of the tones in this yarn. And it was really simple to learn and it works up really well. I feel like I could, I would try that stitch again on a bigger project, like a baby blanket or something. All right, so let me show you the more tedious project. And this is another tank that is in testing um, from Terrapin Fiberworks. It is called the Artemisia. I think that is how you say it, tank. Um, I will do more research to figure out how to say it. That's the thing when you do so much online, especially if you're all in messaging groups and you don't actually hear each other talk. Um, sometimes you can mispronounce things. But um, this tank is uh, one that I'm working on for her. It's a good testing group. She's great. She's a yarn dyer. And um, the Coliseum cowl that I did was uh, her yarn, so Terrapin Fiberworks. And this is her first garment pattern. Actually, I think this is her first pattern that she's written. Um, and it's very pretty. It's this um, kind of textured tank. Sorry, I'm trying to get as much of the dog hair off of it before I show it to you. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's very pretty. I definitely wanted to test that for her, um, especially since I've tested a lot of things. I was like, oh, this is her first pattern test. If this is her first pattern, like I could, you know, I feel like I have skills that can be helpful for that. But also I wanted a tank top. So it was a win-win. So this is the back piece. I think it doesn't really matter which side I show you because right now that's either way. Um, and I'll show you the stitches. So the stitches are um, an extended single crochet with a particular like back loop, front loop pattern. And it's all a fingering weight. And um, I was very ambitious because I got cocky and I was like, oh, I have these lovely little minis um from montana crochet like here's one of them that are all this gray to white and i want to use that at the bottom we'll do an ombre so i'll get a black at the top it'll be fine i can crochet with black yarn and i can and i have obviously but uh, for me because of the stitch pattern was so subtle especially when you start with the straps at the top and because it was black yarn and because it was fingering weight um, it took me a while to do the back piece and, I, and it's taken me a little bit longer to kind of get into it, but I think I'm into it now. Um, I actually have the first, um, v-neck part panel that I finished this morning and it has that same pattern to it. Um, but it's going to be very cute when it's done and the top will be black. Um, it'll have like a, a border that goes around the neckline and the armholes and then it'll fade at the bottom into different grays. So I'm very excited about it and it's gonna be a lot of fun to wear. Um, but um, when I was first doing this, there was an option to make a shorter V-neck or like the as written V-neck. And I started with the as written V-neck cause I'm like, you know, I can probably pull off a deeper V-neck and it was just way too long. So I was like, okay, well you're in timeout cause you were tedious enough to do the first time. Um, I cannot look at you and that's when I did the your warmer. Um, but now I'm back, back and ready, um, for action with it. So I'm very excited about it. Um, now that I feel like I've gotten, kind of gotten the hang of it. And once I do the other front panel piece, um, I'll connect the front and back and then that'll be pretty mindless because once you're kind of into the stitch pattern, especially once I start changing colors, like it'll be a lot easier of a TV crochet than making sure that you're getting all the increases right. Because Lila, the pattern writer, um, put a lot of work into making sure that the shaping was just right. So you do have to pay attention when you're doing the straps. So it'll be beautiful. It did go in timeout, but that's not, that's not an X on the pattern. That is an X on, um, just, just how I went with the process, but very excited about that. I'm hoping to get a decent chunk of that done by the time we talk next week.
we will see. All right, so those were, so that's my current whip. Um, I showed you the finished object, should be this finished object. The other finished object I have for you is this cute little guy. So if you don't know, I'm on Etsy and I do custom orders. And this one came in actually while we were gone. And um, he's just so cute. Look at him. Um, the person requested pink on pink um, with a white beard, kind of a tan complexion. And I love it. I love doing custom gnomes because a lot of times I'm given direction for like colors or a theme. Like the person that the last person I did a custom gnome for, I think she wanted it to look like uh, like to be Gandalf kind of vibes, and he came out pretty Gandalfy. Um, but yes, I was very happy with this, um, and I'm glad that he is done. He'll be on the way to his family tomorrow. Um, so that's really what I've been working on so far. I've got a couple of other things. Here's another custom order that I'm doing right now. It's actually a nursing cover, which will be fun because I've never done one of those before. Um, but I picked up the yarn for that and that'll be good. And then um, friends of ours are sleeping babies, so I'll be working on a baby blanket for them. Got a good idea for that. Um, oh, and um, there's a couple of other things that I'll show you next week that I have started but I haven't gotten very far on. So I'll do that next time. So the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is Yarn Love and I've got some real gems to show you this week. I'll start with what I got in San Francisco. As you know, when my husband and I travel, we try to find a yarn shop because it's important. It's important to find a yarn shop when you're traveling. Um, and it just, it's fun. It makes things more memorable and it's a souvenir that I know I'll use. And then when I use it, I'll think of, oh, this is the yarn from San Francisco or this is the yarn from New York. Um, which I'm very excited about. And it's also fun too, especially for some of the one skein wonder patterns that I write, where it's like, okay, I know I only have this one skein. I can't just go around the street to get another one. What's the best way to use it where the skein shines? Um, so the, the place that we went to in San Francisco is called Firebird Yarns. They were in the Haight-Ashbury district and um, one of the first things that I noticed when we walked in is that they had several crochet samples out. And usually at yarn shops, um, most of the samples that are out are knitting. There's, there might be a couple of crochet ones sitting out there. Like one of the ones at the front was like a crochet sample. I was like, oh, okay. Um, these are my kind of people because um, while I appreciate knitting, it's not something that I do or do well. Um, <laughs> So it was nice to see crochet on display. And then the staff there was really great. Whenever I go into a place when we're traveling, I, also, I always ask for local dyers or um, people who are local to either California or if, you know, if there is somebody specifically in San Francisco that dyes. And they were great. Um, great, great place. And I was told by um, friends on Instagram before I went that they had a wonderful selection of minis, which they did. And just, it was just a wonderful place. So when I walked in, I um, asked, of course, for local yarn. And this was one that was um, local to San Francisco. This is called a Seismic Yarn. And I just love it. This is the skein that I fell in love with. It is called Azurite and Malachite, which is part of their gemstone collection. And you can see that it's like this beautiful teal color, but also like, definitely some strong greens in there too and it is a superwash merino nylon blend and i i just loved it and i don't know what it'll be yet but i did get some things to go with it so i went to their minis and found some friends for this so i knew that this is was coming home with me this is the one i fell in love with they had a lot of really pretty ones they had some lovely speckles. They had some that were like kind of neon speckles. They had a lot of really good options, but this is the one that I was like, I, I can't put it down. Like this is one I need to have. So then I found some minis. This one is from a uh, machete shop. And this one, the name of this color is Mermaid Vibes. And you can see that it pulls a little bit of the teal and then it has some darker blue speckle, some purple, um, some of this blush pink. 
I love mermaids. I'm, I'm all about some mermaid vibes. So I found this one that went with it and I was like, oh, well, let's keep this party going. And then from the same company, I found this kind of peachy um, tone that pulls in some of the blushes from this yarn. Has a little bit of yellow, has some orange, some blue. This one is called Guava Lane, I believe is what that one is called. Um, and then, yeah, you can really see the color really well right there. I found this one from another yarn dyer called, oh, Dream in Color, which I bought from them before and I love, um, that kind of fades out. So I don't know what this will be. It could very easily be a shawl. Like that would be, that's where my mind went first is just to make this into a shawl. But I could also see like, I don't know, some sort of lacy top. And then maybe if I needed to add another skein that was mostly kind of off-white, I don't know. So I don't know what this will be yet. Um, I also thought it could be fun for like a table runner, do some sort of hexes or maybe, I don't know what this will become, but I have options because I got several things. And this was some Firebird yarns. I loved them. There were a couple of other yarn shops that were in San Francisco. But we were there for, like we were there for the weekend, for a few days, and then we went to San Jose and to Monterey. So this was the only yarn shop we went to. Um, so, but I'm very glad I went to this one. It was great. It was a wonderful experience. And then we got some really good food um, in Haight-Ashbury as well. The other yarn that I recently got for Yarn Love is uh, something about a while ago that just came in. It actually came in while we were gone. And um, once I saw the, the, the shipping notification, I was like, oh, it's gonna get there while we're gone, like no. But um, it was waiting patiently for me when I got back. And this is from Bella Fiato, Filato? Yes, Filato Studios. And this was part of her Great Lakes collection. Michigan inspired yarn. Let me get her label up at the front. Okay, guys. This is beautiful. And the light is is doing these colors right, which I really like. Um, being a recent transplant to Michigan, I love Michigan. It's wonderful. And it's um, fun to see how people take inspiration from what's around them, what they see um, in a particular place that you know as well. And so when I saw this collection come out, I knew that I was going to get a decent amount of skeins. And I did, and they're beautiful. So the first one I wanna show you is called M22. And this was kind of the wild card skein for me. It's got a little bit of like a purpley brown, some pink, some teal, some gold, and it's lovely. I have no idea what this will become, but it will become something fun and it's delightful. The second one that I got, as soon as I saw the picture, I was like, this is it, take my money. This is called Mighty Mac, um, which is um, to represent the uh, Mackinac River, Big Mac. And um, I actually have a funny story about this. So when we were first, uh, when we first moved here, we were moving um, all of like our license plate for our car, car registration, driver's license, doing all that stuff. And so we were picking out our new license plate for our cars, and I saw one that had the Mackinac Bridge on it. I was like, oh, that's great. And if you have never seen Mackinac spelled, it has a C on the end of it. So like a noob, I was like, oh yeah, I'd like the one with the Mackinac Bridge. And the, the gentleman looked at me, he's like, it's actually pronounced Mackinac, welcome to Michigan. I was like, okay, cool. Just stuck my foot in my mouth. And we actually drove across that bridge when we went to the UP last summer. So I, <laughs> I love this. And it's mostly kind of this creamy color with a little bit of copper thrown in there and then teal, and it's just lovely. And so the last one I bought is called Leland Blues. I'm a big fan of teal, or really all shades of blue. And I bought this one because it pairs really well with both of these. So all three of these are on a Superwash Merino um, nylon sock base. Because when I was looking through all these, it's like, I don't know what I'm gonna make yet. I didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable buying a sweater quality quantity in any of these because I was like, I don't know what pattern I'm going to use. I'd rather have a variety of colors and then decide, which is usually how I buy things. Um, so I bought Leland Blues because it is a beautiful blue, but also because it goes with both. So if I wanted to make, I don't know, 
something out of these two and something out of these two. I could just split up the skein and use it for both because these could kind of go together, but I, I think I like them better apart than together. They do both have kind of the orangey colors and the blues, but I think the pink and the brown just throw it off a little bit for me. So um, anyway, I love these. They're great. She's wonderful. I will buy from her again. Um, yes, you should get yarn. And I'll put that all in the description below. And that, friends, wraps up this episode of Yarn Chats. I hope you enjoyed it. I will now end with the way I end every week with Can't Let It Go. This week, what I can't let go of are museums. I love museums. Um, I think I've worn my museum nerd shirt on here before. And we were in California for, I think, 10 days, like from when we landed until when we left. And during that time, I went to six museums. And that's not even including, like, I went to the Winchester Mystery House, which I didn't count as a museum. There was a beautiful memorial rose garden in San Jose that I didn't mention. Um, but uh, six museums. And that's a lot. And some of them were were real gems. Like there was one in San Jose called um, the Quilt and Textile Museum. And it was relatively small, but it was great. Like the quilts in there were relatively new for the most part. And also a lot of them talk about social justice and just some really interesting pieces. So I loved that one. Um, we did the San Francisco uh, Modern Museum of Art. I did that one with my husband, which is always fun because um, modern art is not usually his vibe. And it's not always my vibe either, but um, we had fun exploring that, even though we did not leave ourselves enough time to really do that justice. Um, but yeah, museums are great. If you have an opportunity to check out a museum while you're traveling, you should do it because they're wonderful and you'll learn something. Um, regardless. So I hope you have a great rest of your week. I will be here next week and then I will be gone the week after, but that should be the last one for a little while. So bye guys. See you next week.